Hey everyone, Brian T. Bradley here. I'm an asset protection attorney for investors and business owners. I'm licensed in California, Oregon, Washington, and Michigan. I represent clients nationwide, and I'm also rated a super lawyer, rising star list litigation attorney. So I attack it from both ends. Uh, we've gone over a lot of the basics of asset protection, effectiveness, control, cost, and maintenance, um, jurisdiction, both domestic and foreign, and PRP plans or private retirement plans for you California residents who own property in California and live in California. And if you haven't seen those videos, I'd suggest you go back and watch them. Um, you'll get a nice understanding of what asset protection is um, and what your needs are going to be. And they will really help you when you're shopping around for asset protection and juggling this really confusing maze. I want to jump into some of the supporting case law for PRP plans, the private retirement plans for you California residents, because it's a really big topic and there's not a lot of knowledge out there on what these even are or the case law on it. So I'm trying to get out as much information as I can to you guys as I am available to do it. And so I talked about the seven elements used when creating private retirement plans with a solid foundation and it's a foundation built on 40 years of case law. And so one, having a third party administrator. Two, having qualifica a qualification diagnostic. Do you even qualify? Three, having an exemption analysis backed by measurable metrics. Four, having a funding analysis. Five, having planned documentation and keeping them for evidence. Six, maintaining an annual administration with your third party administrator. And seven, having an independent trustee and trust protector. And we don't just man randomly make up these elements. These elements are created through these 40 years of case law and what's being attacked and how, what's being used to attack your plans. And so as long as we start maintaining compliance with these seven elements, you're gonna bolster and strengthen your plan. I then went in in another video to what's actually going on in court. What are we seeing right now presently in court, in mediation, talking with some of my affiliate litigation attorneys who um, were trying these cases right now, a PRP um, challenge in court in California right now. And so some of these are challenges to the corporate structure, the constant recasting and casting of assets from an exempt status to non-exempt status, and the frequency and the rate at which they're doing it. What's the time proximity? Um, friendly loans versus market-based rates in relation to fraud, um, making ongoing contributions to the plan. And if you missed that video, go back and watch that video as in a quick tip video. So let's jump into a few of the important cases just for your mindset and understand what's going on here. Um, and that supports all of this. So we have our first case, In Ray Rucker from the Ninth Circuit in 2009. The court ruled in this case that a PRP plan, a private retirement plan, must be primarily for retirement and funded correctly. This holding was validated again in a case called N. Ray Crosby. This then shows the importance with these cases of qualifying first, do you qualify for the plan, and then having analytics and metrics to show a reasonable need to create and fund a private retirement plan. If there's no need for it, then the courts aren't going to uphold it. And that's based on metrics and analytics. The court in Rucker also cited a very important case pertaining to private retirement plans and asset protection. This case is Dudley found at 249 F3rd at 1176. Sorry for the legal jumble on how the case description is. It's just remember the Dudley case. Um, the court in Dudley here held that private retirement plans are okay and can still be used to shield assets. They're still okay to protect your assets if, the, if they're primarily used for retirement. So part of the purpose of CCP section 704.115, which is the section that controls um, the language for um, PRP plans and creating PRP plans is to protect and shield your assets placed in the trust for retirement. That's the whole purpose of it. And this case adds teeth to the protection. Then we have a case going back even further, 1999, called In Re Moses from the Ninth Circuit. This court held that CCP section 704.115, which is the code section for private retirement plans, applies beyond just bankruptcy, but to all situations with judgment creditors. And it prevents those creditors from reaching the entire corpus placed in the trust. 
This is a huge case, a big case and a big ruling, since it really gives teeth to the exemption protection of PRP plans and the protection tool that's justified and based from reasonable retirement and using documentation, analytics, and metrics. And then we have a recent very big ruling called Tosaria Hotel in 2015 that put all these elements and everything that we've been talking about into a nice bow and package under one case ruling, which is kind of the piggyback off of what we structure our business off of when we're creating PRP plans. Um, this, is in the, this is the importance of using qualification and analytics and metrics and documentation. Um, you're bolstering and strengthening your plan and assets and your protection system by using the existing case law. And all this goes to the importance of using lawyers and a third party administrator who also are on the front lines of the attacks and challenges in court for your asset protection system and plans that you have in place. Not just an attorney salesman who's not in the nitty gritty in the battle. What does the case law say? What are the judges actually saying in court right now, present time? What are they looking at beyond the seven elements? What are the questions they're asking during arguments, during mediation? what's going on in the litigation process, in the mediations. How do we then maintain compliance based off of that? Then we can project towards the future what's gonna happen down the line and we can be ahead of the game. What is the actual frontline and battlegrounds like? Again, thanks for following and I hope these videos are helpful. You can always email me at brian, B-R-I-A-N, at btblegal.com for questions or you can jump on my website at www.btblegal.com for some good videos and information. And though I don't represent you, I'm not your lawyer, we have no retainer agreement or anything like that, it's a big jumbled maze and people are getting a lot of misinformation from just a lot of attorney salespeople or attorneys who don't know what they're talking about or CPAs that are trying to give legal advice. And unfortunately it's creating a big confusion for everybody. And I'm creating these videos to help kind of navigate the maze for you all. So take care and thank you for following.